With, without a single word of exaggeration, this is my favorite animated film of all time. I, I saw this thing seven, eight times in the first two weeks that it came out, and I don't want to refer to how old I was when it came out. <laughs> but when you guys are sitting there, and you guys have so much history, and you've done so much great stuff. When you guys were doing The Lion King and the characters that you brought to life, at what point did you know, or did you ever know during that process, that you had something exceedingly special on your hands that was going to be with us nearly 20 years later. Oh, that's the thing is, I don't think we did. Uh, you know, we, we knew we liked it. We knew it was a good story. Mm -hmm. We were really into the characters. Um, so on a personal level, we liked the film, but there was no way of knowing. We had no clue that it would become the phenomenon that it really has turned into. Although, I, you would, I think you might agree, when, when they released the trailer, which is yeah. just that opening sequence, and they said, well, here's the trailer for Lion King, and we all kind of expected the usual yeah. You know, piled together a bunch of scenes, the and scenes and the <laughs> voiceover. Voice guy. But instead, they just ran that opening four minutes of the film, and then you know it ends with da boom. Yeah. And it was just like, still makes me catch my breath. Wow! Opening. I said, well, yeah. I think we we may have something here. You know, yeah. I think that that maybe gave us a little clue that we might have something. Here. Yeah. You know, I was talking to Robert Gillen about how you know it's one thing to have a script and see what a character says, but in animation, so much of that character is brought by the voice. But at the same time. The characters you guys brought to us, particularly you know the young Simba and Pumbaa, so much of it is how these guys move, what what they do, and yeah. really bringing them to life on screen. When you guys, aside from the script itself, what was your decision making process like for both of you about what you wanted to put into this character? What type of personality was this character going to have? Well, it's about acting choices. Mm. It really is. I mean, we're. And I, I tend to often think of myself more as an actor than as an artist. I mean, it's, it's, it's a means to an end to be able to draw and animate, bring these characters to life. But it really is about the performance and making acting choices. So I think most of us approach our roles pretty much the same way an actor would on a play or, or in a movie. You know, we, we know what the script is. We know, you know, we're familiar with the storyboards. We've seen the early story reels. Um, we've maybe worked with the voice talent and got to know them a little bit. Um, and we kind of observe some of their mannerisms. So it's all about putting together this performance, really. And, and then that coupled, in this case, with the idea of, okay, it's in a lion body you know I need to know you know what makes a lion a lion versus your house cat you know what makes a warthog different than you know the pigs you see at the state fair I mean there's those little things that we you know I think Disney has been known for uh, the research or the authenticity that goes into the films because that that helps bring the air of believability it's all about making believable characters and believable situations not necessarily real i mean simba's not real he's just a drawing yeah. but <laughs> he's oh, i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> but you know but you know understand that's the magic in yeah, that it's it you forget that you know you 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 forget that it's it's drawings and and hand painting backgrounds but it's it's he becomes that character and i think that's that's the magic at least that's the way I always have approached my character. That's yeah, putting putting us into the characters too. Mm -hmm. that, that a little of ourselves, yeah. The voice and the and the animator. Yeah. Now you you mentioned you made the comparison as between animator and performer, really, and a lot of actors when you know, you play Luke Skywalker, that's going to change your life. You play James Bond, that's going right. to change your life. How has you know animated being such a big part of the Lion King changed your guy's career from that point to now? Do you think how has it influenced you? Well, it's funny because I was a brand new. Supervised an animator. First character I got was Lion King Pumba. <laughs> First opportunity, and I had no idea what I was jumping into. So I could try, kind of boldly go forward, and I'm going to make this fun. I'm going to make it my own, and all that kind of stuff. But now looking back at it, I think I should have been scared out of my <laughs> pants. I really should have been, because it's it's had a huge impact on my career. There's there's you know that'll probably be the character that I'm defined by as an animator. It'll always be Pumbaa. People will always come up to me at Disney and conventions or on the street and say, "Can you draw me Pumbaa?" It won't be any of the other characters I've worked on. It'll be Pumbaa, and I'm okay with that. I love that actually. Yeah, but on the same token, you know, we we finish Lion King, and you go, "Okay, close that chapter," and there's a new movie to go on to. Mm -hmm. So it's always there's always something new to go on to. I can't say that it's yeah, you know, but I think it's to me it's about just 
knowing that you know I was a part of this film, and as you and many others have said, this this film meant so much to so many people, and I think that's that's very special.